This is About to Drop, a podcast where I interview independent artists about music that they're about to release. In each episode, I'll have a conversation with a new artist to talk about where they came from, how they got started in music, and most importantly, what they're going to be releasing next. We'll cover all sorts of topics, including the writing process, recording, producing, and even things like marketing, branding, and promotion. So thanks for tuning in, and let's get started with the episode. Um, I had heard some of her music through uh, uh, an associate. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if you'd like the backstory. Yeah, I lo- love the music and uh, loved her voice. And, um, and when I found that she was in this band called Tribe, I tried to, you know, get in contact with her because there was like this mystery going on where no one really knew what was going on with Janet. And so um, I, I reached out to her through a, her art website and um, we connected through email and agreed that uh, that she and myself and my wife would meet up in Jersey City and have breakfast, which we did. And we thought it was a great idea to further look into musical collaboration. And then uh, Janet came down to Cherry Hill and we had a really nice writing session that uh, was productive. And then uh, we just decided to continue pursuing it. And now it's been, I think, three years now. And we have yeah. uh, the first album done, and we just released the first single, "Bad Dreaming." And I could tell you my my history in music, um, but I'll just make it brief. Um, I started playing professionally when I was seventeen. Um, I was with um, epic artist Jack Bailey, who saw me playing in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where I kind of um, had my first professional chops. And so I was signed to him. Uh, and he had a five year, five album contract with Epic, and I was his lead guitar player. And then I went to Musicians Institute, um, did my own uh, solo thing for a while, had a couple of bands in Los Angeles, um, released two CDs, uh, the most recent CD, uh, Borrow, You Mixed. That's right. <laughs> Tattered and True. Um, did a great job mixing it. Oh, thank you. By and, the way. <laughs> um, I've just been, you know, playing playing solo and, and um, writing and um playing various bands the most recent uh band i was in was a uh, kind of an auditorium tribute band to acdc but that's basically me very cool how about you janet well uh as don said yes we met um he contacted me through my art website and told me this crazy story about how he came to find out about my music and uh, we met up and I had, remember Don, I had food poisoning? Yeah. <laughs> but we had spoken on the phone and I actually checked out Don's website. So I'd been, so backing up a little, I was in this band Tribe in Boston in the 90s and we were, you know, pretty successful and almost cracked it back before internet, back be- before YouTube. But there was just one way, which was the record company radio way. and did that and then that band broke up and then I had a solo uh, band and that kind of didn't really go as far as I wanted it to either. So I sort of shut down for a while uh, doing little projects, but then Don contacted me and I was kind of looking for someone to collaborate with and didn't know quite how to go about doing that or what that would look like. And then he contacted me, we had email exchanges then he's like, hey, I'm a singer-songwriter. Check out my website and here's my stuff. And I checked it out and I was like, wow, okay. Yes, let's meet. And uh, I was super impressed with his um, writing and uh, I just really liked him. And so we set up this time to meet in Jersey City and I had like, I was so sick, but I'm like, I'm not missing this appointment. (laughs) So Don and his wife Lucinda drove in and I like wobbled over there and I didn't eat anything. And Lucinda's like, Janet, don't you want to eat anything? And I was like, no, really, I can't. I, uh, well, we had a great meeting and then we uh, arranged to meet up, I think like the following week or two weeks later and Lucinda was there and we had this jam session and then Don and I started writing shortly after that. And then we found well, certainly I found to my delight that this was the 
collaborator that I was looking for for so long. And I've never had like a one-on-one -on -one collaboration. I've always been in a band and been in bands that are, have a lot of people that are already writing. And so I had like, they throw me a song or I submit a song or, or that kind of thing. But this is a situation I'd never been in before, which is like, it's Don and I doing everything together. So we write a lot of original stuff. There's Don has his songs that he brings to the table. I have my songs that I bring. And then we do a lot of songs together. So Bad Dreaming is a true collaboration of uh, the two of us. Wouldn't you say, Don? Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Let's, let's talk about the uh, the single a little bit. How, uh, how how would you describe your guys' sound in general before we dive into that one song? Well, in our bio, which I wrote, <laughs> <laughs> it is hypnotic and alluring, and a de both a departure from and return to their alternative rock roots. Pardon me for quoting myself, <laughs> but it's kind of like that. It's like because of Don's compositional capabilities and the way to like really bring something unique to our writing sessions. And then my um, alternative roots and my personality, which is rather on the sort of moody dark side between us, I think we create this uh, interesting synthesis uh, that is unlike anything I've ever done mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Don? Yeah, I just add to that. Um, I was always inspired by um, the uh, musicianship of bands in the uh, 70s and 80s like Chicago and Steely Dan and and uh, the progressive rock of bands like Rush and um, and and but from a songwriter standpoint, I, I've always just really admired people like um, Sting and the melodic choices that they would make. And and so as we approach music, um, you know, I, I'm trying to incorporate that that kind of musicality that inspires, um, you know, a, a, a person to continue writing. And I think that the, this, the music we've done uh, so far has, a, you know, all of that kind of inspirational um, content that that turns me on musically and then Janet's voice is unlike any vocalist I've ever heard or worked with she has a phenomenal voice with a quality that is um, you know it's it's just Janet it's unique it doesn't sound like anyone else and I knew that the first time I heard her music and it uh, it inspired and touched me and and um, and I, I feel just unbelievably um, fortunate to uh, have her uh, singing music that I'm collaborating um, towards. So anyway, mm -hmm. thanks, man. Thank you, John. <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. So for this track, how, how did this one, how did, how did this song come together? Was it, uh, I imagine it was one of like many of you guys had written, but um, was this different as far as like how it came together or the process behind it? Yeah, you know, we do different writing sessions like uh, some of the most actually the writing sessions we do collaboratively are up at uh, Janet's place in, in Jersey City. And we use the iPhones to, um, you know, record um, ideas when we hear this something that's going on. And I came up with a guitar riff, um, which I've, f I've fiddled around with that riff, you know, for probably 10 or 15 years. It's just kind of a fun riff that I, I, I like to, to play and I, and I hadn't put it to a complete song. And so that. I just start. Yeah. So I started playing th cool. that, that, and, um, let's see. Uh, and I was like, Oh my God, that's fabulous. Yeah. So Janet liked it. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, I, I came up with some guitar chords and, um, and the all night sleep tight thing. Um, which is kind of the bridge chorus to the song, uh, we spontaneously harmonized to this uh, ascending line and uh, caught it on, uh, on the iPhone. And when we listened back, we just knew that there was something very nice there that we wanted to expand on. So, um, so Janet wrote the lyrics to the song and, um, and uh, you know, we, we arranged it and <laughs> we recorded it and, uh, and uh, that was it's basically Don right. worked all the dials and produced it and mastered it and uh, yeah yeah 
So. Where did you guys um, record this at? Uh, are you guys like recording and producing at home or are you guys going out to like an actual studio to do it? Uh, well, both. We actually, um, on this particular track, we had Perry James, who's our drummer, um, uh, record the drum track uh, in Boston. Um, Janet can talk to that experience. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Zippa Studios in Boston. Yeah. But um, we, we have, uh, I had two studios, uh, one of which I had to move out of because they wanted to tear down the building. And so I got I, so I got another studio. So part of the song, actually, I don't, I'm not sure if we did any of Bad Dreaming at that original studio, but um, essentially there uh, it's my studio. So now my studio is at my home, but um, at that uh, time we did Bad Dreaming. A lot of the tracks were done in the studio down in um, uh, Audubon. Yeah. Is that the spot I came to visit you a few years ago? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Yeah. Lawyer's office, cum recording studio. That's right. That's right. As lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was great. <laughs> yeah, that's a good studio. The, the cool, one of the coolest things about that studio is that right outside the door, um, uh, a, a married couple who were actually robins, birds, mm -hmm. uh, set up a nest right outside the door, and I was able to watch the eggs hatch. And uh, through, you know, a three or four week period and continue to take video of it. And I made a, it was really, you know, cool, whatever. Yeah. But it has nothing to do with the music. Just it's, it's just part of the nature atmosphere out there. Yeah. And I would always be watching the birds out the window when I was supposed to be coming in for a cue. And Don would be like, Janet, <laughs> get out of the window. Uh, but yeah, we recorded it in that studio. And then I've done, I don't know if we did any bad dreaming in your home studio, Don, I'm not sure. We might have completed the vocals at the other Autobahn lo location. Well, I completed the mix and the mastering here. Yeah, yeah. And the bass line I put down in Autobahn. Mm -hmm. Anyway. It sounds, it sounds really good. I was, um, I listened to it before jumping on the call just to kind of like, you know, refresh my memory. Um, there's like a lot of space, it feels like. And like everything is sitting in its right space. If well, that makes sense. Sounds good for coming from someone who mixes. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Um, you know, I got lucky on the mix. I mean, I, I can't say that I um, am going to get lucky on every mix like that, but I think I got lucky on the mix. Sometimes, you know, you know how it is. Mm -hmm. You flip a dial, you, you change a, a parameter or something, and all of a sudden something hits and you're not sure wh how, where you got there. But, you know, the mix itself, um, Turned out, it turned out, you know, I'm, I'm proud, I'm proud of the mix. So thanks for noticing the space. Yes. The space, yeah, it's a good, it's a good thing to have space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I think one thing that contributes to a good mix is a good arrangement. You know what I mean? Like if you, sure. if everything is kind of, if you're placing instruments in the right spaces, then you don't have to mix that much as much as just like, yeah, kind of get it all to gel. Yeah. If you have too much shit and they're all like fighting for the same spot, you know, mm -hmm. then it's good. then it gets real tricky to try and make something work. Well, Baro, you did a fantastic job on my album Tattered and True because if you recall, that album had about you know twenty five different instruments on any given given track. Yeah, those were big sessions, and you didn't send over all the files. I was thinking about this earlier today. I would pull up the Pro Tool session, and there'd be like missing clips. Do you remember this? No. No, so be like a whole oboe track that was, it just said like missing audio. Uh, I did know. I send it to you? Did I, I did I find no, it? I think it was, I think you sent it to me, but um, I had this happen with another mix engineer recently. Um, it just like Pro Tools didn't recognize what, which audio files went where. Uh -huh. So I had to like manually go like through the audio files to like get it all to work. I remember having to send you new guitar tracks, but you did a great job. So as far as recognizing space, you know, I, I, uh, I, I know that you're talented at mixing, so I appreciate the uh, oh, thank you. No conversation about it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and I'll just uh, weigh in on the whole arrangement thing. I think that this is a thing that's super important to me as a songwriter and as, uh, you know, the final shape, the final shape of, and sound of the song, because I'm a huge pop song fan. 
like the structure of pop songs and the arrangements and the way that things come in and the space that you need and you know the dramatic accents and things like that are you know I totally cut my teeth on that but Don and I spend a lot of time doing that and I have a lot of opinions about that stuff and I think that I consider myself a pretty good arranger you know I can't necessarily like play all the instruments but I can I can hear where they need to go or, or hear so Don and I have a lot of uh, productive conversations about that and I think as far as the collaboration goes in my mind the final arrangements are really a collaboration as well spent time on like put the bell here and can we back this <laughs> up? need a fill here and sometimes I'll insist like on like in bad dreaming there's this ding 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 I'll leave you to find it but I fought for that like well no it was going it was it was it was being hit 16 times and you said eight <laughs> yeah. okay, okay. And the bell and I made Don go through every single bell sound on his thing and it took, you know, but anyway, I think little things like that as a pop song lover, because you know, there's these things in songs that you love, like this one little weird thing. It's yeah. like in a, a John Lennon song, the solo record, and he goes, cookie, <laughs> I don't know if you know that song. Yeah hell is the name of that song but anyway it's just this little strange thing or somebody there's some noise in the background or somebody's voice cracks in a certain way and then it becomes the favorite thing that you listen for each time so absolutely I, I know exactly what you're talking about or just like a little lick a guitar player does or like a fill they do in a certain way yeah it just like sticks out to you every time yeah yeah yeah, that probably underscores that what we're really trying to go for anyhow is having uh, characteristics that are unique to our project. And I think that that's what you're referring to is those characteristics about a particular song that stand out and make something special. Mm -hmm. I, I think every every artist is trying to do that, is trying to say, sure. here's here's what sets my effort apart and, uh, and hope, it, well, whatever. Yeah, but I mean, there's also a fine line too between adding like too much ear candy and taking away from the song also, you know? Yeah, so you have to like work on getting that fine balance where it's, it, it adds without taking away. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's the whole thing like, uh, and, and every musician knows this, you fall in love with your demo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? demo I, is. Uh, yeah, I know, <laughs> which is a real thing, but you can actually be cured of it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there are little gems and demos that you kind of want to retain and, and bring in. But but I can say too, for, for bad dreaming, I don't think we, we never really added any ear, ear candy per se. I think most of the things that we, we enjoyed about uh, the, our particular track were, were happy accidents where, wow, that was great. Or you did that nicely, but we, we never actually um, have taken audio and said hey let's put this in here because it'll sound great right there um except for the bell the bell the bell yeah no the bell was the bell was that was uh yeah but no i agree with you i'm being somewhat facetious but but yes i agree with you it kind of came together pretty organically mm -hmm. did you agree yeah. Don? it did it was very a very natural part yeah. of, very natural flow of writing and recording that song those are always the best, right? Yeah. When it kind of happens and there's a flow and everyone's on the same page and you're not fighting to make the song happen. Yeah. Right. Um, what would you, uh, would you mind talking a little bit about what the song is about? I wouldn't mind. Okay. Some, some folks want to keep it a mystery and I, I respect that, but. <laughs> I actually like talking about lyrics. I should take this one right down. Yeah, definitely. That's how I wrote the lyrics. Um, I uh, I wrote the lyrics. Don writes lyrics to uh, to songs as well, but this one was mine. And this uh, I spent a lot of time on lyrics. As uh, this is uh, so, it's called bad dreaming. So it's a it's based on real experience of this recurring bad dream slash nightmare that I have of this one guy and this one relationship and this one 
guy <laughs> who will not leave my subconscious and has been haunting my dreams for 20 years. And so that's what this is about. And I thought it was going to be cathartic and I'd stop dreaming about him, but that's yeah. actually <laughs> I mean, maybe, not really. No, not really. But anyway, it felt great doing it. And it was really interesting to try to lyrically capture the way that I feel when I have these dreams and, and uh, the sort of never ending same ass dream. <laughs> I'm sure many people experience this, especially with romantic relationships gone astray, you know, but anyway, that's what it's about. Okay. Do you, uh, do you, do you find your lyrics to be a little more uh, like direct and conversational or do you try to make them a little more like poetic and, or uh, what would the word be? Yeah, I guess abstract. like poetic. Abstract, yeah, that's the word. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and that's, that's a great question. Uh, poetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, I love songs that from other artists that are very direct, that you're, it's like you're sitting down at a table and you're having a conversation with them and it's so immediate, but I don't really know how to do that or maybe it's that I don't know how to do it, but that it doesn't come naturally to me. I'm a storyteller, I'm a writer as well, independent of music, also a word writer. So my songs tend to be stories that, and I'm thinking like, how can I write a story that other people will relate to? But it's more an objective story. It's not a sitting down, like, you know, it's like Blueberry Beer, Don, your song Blueberry Beer, right? That's like if you were sitting across the table from somebody, which is the context of the song, but you feel like you're having a conversation. Um, I tend to write more obliquely, like it's a, metaphor or a story mm -hmm. or a tale of caution <laughs> <laughs> well you know yeah. i think i think lyrics like that fit the um like the sound of the music you know what i mean like like they they, they go together yeah well thank you yeah yeah it's i think the fun thing about that particular song bad dreaming is that uh janet also uh came up with the um concept for the music video um and, uh, and that was fun too. And even though she has a particular inspiration from a previous relationship that um, helped her along with the words and the story and the song, it, it kind of went into a whole nother direction when she was able to um, uh, visually conceive it in a more abstract uh, way, which was uh, a, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the visual fit the audio too. So, <laughs> so those, were, those two worked together as well. Yeah, it's a bit dark, mm -hmm. dark and gloomy and a little exciting, <laughs> I think. Silent movie fans, you got to watch this video. But uh, my friend wrote me and he's like, well, I just watched your video and I don't think I'll be sleeping tonight. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? I didn't, I didn't hear that comment. Stevie, yeah, my friend Stevie, who, who, you, guitar player friend. Anyway, some people have... Um, less tolerance for certain images, but yeah. anyway. Um, so, uh, you know, as far as the, did you guys say you're putting out an EP or is it like a full length album? It's a full length album. We have 10 tracks. Okay. What was it? Um, is this like the first 10 you wrote for specifically for the album or did you, was this pared down from a larger group of songs? You know, it's actually, um, you yeah, know, that's a great question. There's a, there's about three or four that we haven't fleshed out and started um, putting more than just basic tracks to. So um, maybe out of 14 tunes, it's really nine. And the 10th one is going to be an instrumental that we're still working on. Um, yeah, it's a good question, though. It's not, wow, we're so prolific. We have 30 songs. Which do we choose for the album? <laughs> um, it's it's really the the first one's. And, I, you know, I think Janet and I both um, really didn't work on any ideas that we didn't feel already um, were something that we would want to complete. And, um, I, you know, I, it's, been, it's been really nice. We, Janet mentioned her pop sensibilities, and I think her pop sensibilities are a nice match for kind of my, my uh, musical um, uh, nature, which 
isn't it's not anti-pop but it certainly isn't like a more straight ahead pop it's more of a, a progressive um area and i think that they complement each other very well when we're putting the things together and so we kind of steer each other when uh we're going in a direction that is working for one but not the other we'll we'll talk about it and make sure we kind of try to stay on the path where we're both happy in the direction it goes and she's easy to work with so um yeah, to long answer to your question, uh, 13 uh, down to nine. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll just uh, reiterate that we've had other things that we've worked on and if we feel like yeah, it's just not maybe strong enough, you know, and also echo Don's, you know, the collaboration. I feel like Don is easy to work with too in the sense that he's always open to hearing an alternative opinion and I've worked with other bands and other band members who just weren't mm -hmm. and it can be uh, you know and everybody's different you know and every band and every collaborator has their own you know value to bring to any experience but I, I really feel with Don and I that we're able to just you know go back and forth and back and forth and eventually end up in a place where we're both like yeah Mm -hmm. So that's a very new experience for me too, like totally new. <laughs> it's been, um, it's great. Well, yeah, so what you were saying, like every everybody is different and, you know, I, I've, I've been able to work with just a, lots of different people just on different projects, whether it's with uh, just one other artist or with a group of writers and an artist or something like that. Yeah. And um for the most time, the sessions go fine, but it's like it's rare when you find someone that like, you really work well with, you know, and that and that is something special. So, good on you for recognizing it. Part of the murder charm. <laughs> We're going to ride that. We're going to ride that as far as we can ride it. So, what is the rollout plan for the rest of the album? I know the uh, pandemic has probably put a put the brakes on things, but, um, yeah, it's you know, interesting it's too, there. because it's, it's brought up new uh, questions about what do we do? We can't get Perry into the studio to, to record drums for, for some of the songs that we might've wanted to have uh, his drums on. So, um, we're pushing forward and using, um, uh, other choices in, in finalizing songs, but, um, I'm, uh, finishing mixing and mastering the next release, which is called fire. And um, we put up a, a preview of that last night, just the first like 60 seconds of the song. And it's a six minute song. It's, it's. Uh, yeah. Murdoch's second release. Yeah. So that's that. And then uh, um, the third song release is uh, uh, a song I written quite a while ago called Blueberry Beer. And Janet does an unbelievable job on the vocal. It's a, it's a beautiful, intimate song and a little bit different than the rest of the Murdoch uh, catalog as far as how it was mixed and produced and arranged, etc. Um, and then we've, we've got uh, uh, all the other songs ready. There's a song called Gone. There's an Almost True, Running Away. We have a bunch of, you know, the songs are pretty much, are pretty much ready. You just have to get to the fine-tune fine some of the mixes and, uh, and finish them up. So... I'm hoping to have the whole album mixed in the next three weeks and, um, and then release sometime in the next two or three months, but we're definitely going to have a uh, fire finalized the next day or two and, um, and then submit that. The thing with the business part of it is you probably know, Varro, is that you, when you, when you finally do send it up to the distribution point, um, they do request a longer lead time. So you have the opportunity to get the, uh, Said, song in front of some of the marketing components of these streaming services, you know. Um, so we might explore it, uh, that also. We're in really no hurry, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we would like to get our arms around this and just have it finalized and released. Yeah, because I have three new songs that I've. <laughs> yeah, no, we do. We've got other new stuff that we want to get. We're both writing new stuff and. Um, you know, as you said, borrow, it's like, because we can't get together and like, I can't go to Don's studio. It's like, we can't work. 
and he can't come here. We can't really workshop these songs. So there I am at the piano, just like <laughs> making the crap out of these three songs. And I'm like, come on, Don, we got to like workshop these songs. Gonna, He's like, I'm going to post your piano playing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's, it's a little bit frustrating, but then it makes you sort of, it's a little frustrating not being able to get together and work together, but I've found for me anyway, that it really makes me take a closer look at the songs that I'm, um, I don't have any choice cause it's just me, but it's been kind of instructive to, to just go over like, what's this chord change and wait a minute, does this work here? And should this, you know, an arrangement wise, like we were talking about earlier, um, because of the isolation, but still the dedication to, to keep things going, I'm actually learning things that maybe I wouldn't have learned if mm -hmm. Don was helping me <laughs> or if, you know, we were, we were just duking it out like in a session because all that goes by so fast. Right. And then you're like, that's great. And then you record it. But when you got to figure it out and figure out why and defend it. Right. Cause I'll send you stuff, Don. I'll be like, here's my iPhone recording of my latest song on the piano. And he's like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Let's look at that bridge. I think maybe, you know. <laughs> so, but then that takes days or weeks to get back and forth. So that's the real, it's really slowed things down a lot, you know. You think it slowed things down? The, I mean, the pandemic. You think so? Okay. Yeah. Instead of you and me being there and like having two hours go by and then we figure oh, yeah. it out. As opposed yeah. to I send you a text and you get back to me the next day and you're like, I don't know. And I'm like, when do you have time? And I don't know. And let me work this out. And here's the new thing. And then it goes back and forth and 75 texts. And then. Yeah. The, the, the pandemic's a terrible thing and it, it's awful. It's in the, um, the only time actually that's been created for our project is I'm not at my job. I can't work because um, my regular job is closed. And so it's given me more time to spend on the, you know, the, um, the beautiful creative yet sometimes tedious work of mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing as you know and so you know I, i've had a lot more time to get the project farther along and so we're now just a couple of weeks from being you know, having it complete yeah. it's uh, just a matter of getting that done mm -hmm. have you guys tried doing like um facetime writing sessions or like zoom writing sessions dude we edited the entire video over facetime yeah <laughs> it took a long time and we did it and it's like don's like moving his phone he's like can you see my monitor can you, see that there? you see it and i'm like a little to the left don this went on for like days but it was awesome because, and we and i i don't know how we did it don god yeah. bless you man. it god was like all little phone thing propped up in my pencil holder but you know because we were like we're dealing with all these film clips and then Don had shot original video before the quarantine and then going through clips and, you know, I'm sure many other artists are going through similar things, but it was awesome, actually. It was. It was. Really and it, and it, it leads to advice that we could probably impart to others after some of these uh, experience we've had. And um, that advice is just keep throwing stuff against the wall. There were a lot of happy accidents that happened in the mixing, like I mentioned earlier. And there were a lot of happy accidents that happened in the video editing where, you know, we put, I would put something in and just because we needed to place it and we place it and then play it back and went, Oh, wow. You know, I feel like Don, how did you match that exactly to that drum hit right there? He's like, I don't know, man, that's where <laughs> Like that kind of thing happened repeatedly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not that there wasn't a lot of really intricate editing because there was, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, you gotta just keep creating people. Yeah. Just keep keep throwing it up against the wall. Don't stop. You'll find something. Don't that stop. Inspires you. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Just keep, 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 keep creating, keep creating, keep recording, keep creating. Mm -hmm. You'll have some. Oh, I sung that wrong. Don't stop believing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Sorry, I heard, heard that song. Sorry. Uh, 
Yeah, no, I binged The Sopranos once, and I think I remember that song in there from... Who sang that? Uh, you know who sang it. <laughs> and if you people out there don't know, shame on you. If anyone's been to a bar around closing time, they've heard that song. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's my go-to karaoke song. <laughs> totally. Uh, so that's cool. You guys have been doing like everything uh, with just the two of you. And you, I mean, you mentioned you have like a drummer. Um, I assume that he records remotely and then sends you guys over all the stems. Yeah. Well, actually, um, the recording happened in September of the drums on Bad Dreaming before the pandemic. Yeah. So we had pretty much the whole arrangement nailed right down and the lyrics. And then yeah. I went up to Boston because I was from Boston and Perry used to play in my solo band, uh, Perry James. So he's a great drummer. And I knew Zippa is like a, you know, institution, a recording studio in Boston. So anyway, I went up there for a day and he, Perry recorded three tunes. And then we came back and mixed. We've been doing that and then releasing. And, uh, but there's been no, re no live recording of drums since. I mean, we wanted him to do Fire, which we're releasing, but that ain't gonna happen because it's the pandemic. Yeah. So, um, but when this clears, then we'll, if it clears, be, you know, when we get to the next batch of songs, then we'll definitely bring him on. But, mm -hmm. uh, but as far as like handling all like the other responsibilities, you know, uh, mixing, social media, video editing, um, how do you guys uh, break all that stuff up between the two of you? Do you guys have individual roles or you both just tackle everything together? I love this question. It's again, it's a total collaboration. Like Don's the tech guy. Like he does all the studio stuff. I'm like, let me sing you my bass part. And then he'll play it. Or I'll, I'll say something about the mix and then he'll do it. And then social media wise, he's more savvy, but then I create a lot of the content for the social media because I'm also a visual artist. So I did the logo for the band and I do the, 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 the painting for the website. So we go back and forth between what we contribute to the the final product. Mm -hmm. Would you say that that's accurate, Don? Yeah, it could totally. Yeah. I mean, Don is also very creative, but I'm like a I'm like a handicraft person, so I like make things, mm -hmm. and Don can implement things, and I'm like, thank you so much for uploading that video, because I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> but here's the picture for it. <laughs> you know, it goes like that. No, it's great you guys work together. Uh, in most of the bands I've played in, one person does everything. <laughs> and oftentimes it's been me. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. And I bet you do it well, Boro. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny, like when you start a band or you, which is a lot like starting a business, you, you don't think that you're going to be having to learn Photoshop and Final Cut and how to do photography, like all this other stuff that goes along with it. Yeah. Uh, but you learn along the way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously with the pandemic, things are, you know, all up in the air, but what does the future look like for you guys? Um, are you planning to like uh, go out and play shows when, when bars finally open back up again? Um, you know, what is it, what does the next like six months look like? We wish we had a crystal ball. We do want to go out and play live. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm sure we'll play some gigs. You know, gigging is an interesting thing in the New York area because you've got to, number one, get rehearsal space. You have to get musicians who want to play. Uh, sometimes, you know, they have to be paid. You know, you get professional musicians. Are, it, I don't think it's a point where it's going to be, hey, you're part of the band. And then, you know, we've had 75 downloads so far. So here's your dime. You yeah. Know, it, it, <laughs> you know, Spend it wisely. <laughs> yeah, you know, so um we we do want to play them live, but when we do, um and if we do, it's probably mostly gonna be for our own edification, right? That mm -hmm. we want to hear them live, we want to play them live. And yeah. so we're not I, I I doubt we know what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we do get up and play uh live. And it's just, you know, this great, amazing thing. And we feel terrific about the performance and, and the chemistry that's happening. And we find that space, you know, that flow on stage that every live performer wants to be able to have. 
Um, otherwise, what's the point? Um, then we, we, you know, we're going to have to continue, of course. But right now, we're just writing and recording and, and uh, releasing the album. And uh, right, Janet? I mean, hopefully, we'll be out playing sometime in the next six months, don't you think? I would love to perform. There's nothing I like better than being on stage. Nothing in the whole world. But like Don said, we don't have a band. But if who knows what could happen? I mean, this Project Murdoch could have a life of its own and then we can adjust. And if it requires a band. And Don and I have also talked about just going out and doing like an open mic night and doing these songs acoustically. Because that's how they all started basically anyway most of these songs so that's another thing that we might consider doing um which is there's a very vibrant open mic uh culture you know in the tri-state area so we had talked about doing that before the pandemic and you know that may be but i want you know the whole thing and the marshall stacks and the fog and the whole thing <laughs> plan I, I don't know if i'm ever going to achieve it but <laughs> yeah. fog is key Stage yeah <laughs> fog and good lights the light show makes the difference oh, the light show you're so right borrow the light show <laughs> Give me uh, a so, yeah <laughs> so uh where, where can people find you online uh, is there like a particular site you're most active on and what are all your social media handles well, we're on Facebook uh, under Murdoch. Um, you can find us under um, on YouTube if you search Murdoch and then Bad Dreaming. Um, our links are also in all the descriptions of each of these sites. We have Instagram, which is, I think, Murdoch Band. Yep. Um, Murdoch, or Mur Band. Murdoch Records. Yep, but and the Murdoch Records site. Yep, Murdoch we have Records, and then we have... Um, we have our own website, which is uh, MurdochBand.com, and um, yeah, and, and yeah, and yeah. so I think in the first single, you know, we released it two weeks ago, and I, we've gotten over six hundred views on YouTube of the music video, and um, I think we've had like over a few hundred streams and about forty or fifty downloads of the track, so you know. It's that's the right direction. It would have been awful if the if the numbers were negative. <laughs> How many are you supposed to have? And I just I'm a big YouTube uh, music fan, and I have like the you know I paid so I don't have to have commercials. And I'll like I'm like I love this song. Let me play it, and it's like twenty million four hundred and seventy five thousand six hundred and thirty three views, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know? How does that even happen? Um, some of that's classic stuff, but some of it's stuff from like five years ago. And I'm like, yeah. Or 673,000 views. I was like, yeah, that'd be mm -hmm. nice. That'd be sweet. <laughs> but, you know. It takes time to get, get to that level, you know, time and, and money too. You know, a lot of times the ads are being driven or, or driving, you know, traffic to, the, to, to watch these videos. Right, right, you know? right. Right. You know, or they get on a good playlist or, you know, if they have a whole PR campaign that's driving traffic. You know, it's We're still trying to figure that all out. Don's the marketing whiz. So that's in, that's over in his purview. Not so much of a whiz, but we're, we're doing the best we can and learning as we go. Yeah. Um, we'll release one like song. We'll week, release. Though. What's that borrow? And it changes like every week too. Yeah, it, it does. And, uh, you know, we have we also have to be realistic of understanding that there's a, uh, you know, a finite uh, interested audience in the music that we're playing and how do you reach them and how do you do it affordably? And and so right now we're just pretty much counting on word of mouth and, you know, people sharing the music and um, I would have know, a parade if there weren't a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally have, have a parade. Is that what what our people, Murdoch has released it. I would, but you know, you can't yeah. do that. You just open your window and shout it down. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Anyway, I oh, like parade. Where, where does the name Murdoch come from? I meant to ask that earlier. Mm. Uh, yeah. So um, I love movies and film. And my favorite movie of all time is a movie called Dark City. 
um, Alex Proyas film from 1998. It's a sci-fi uh, film with uh, Kiefer Sutherland and Jennifer Connelly and uh, William Hurt. Great movie. Love it. And the lead character's name is John Murdoch. And um, it's a beautiful story about this person who feels like he knows who he is regardless of what his identity is and um and the love that he has in his heart for um the you know the love interest and um yeah yeah as, so as the strangers are moving around identities that love doesn't change and they're trying to seek the soul of the human what's special to human uh, experience and that's the meaning of our band so murdoch <laughs> no, so there's that name. I'm going to jump in here, Don. And then okay. there's all like we went through. We were doing this over text, like dozens and dozens of names. Like what name? And back and forth. And I had this, and no, and the, and it went on. And it was like lists and lists. And then we got to the M's, and then we had several M names. And then Murdoch came, and I loved it. And Don's like, Oh my God, Murdoch! That's Murdoch from the, the movie. So it didn't start out that way. At least that's my memory of it, but it, but it got there. Yeah. But I like it. I liked it before I knew about this because it's a cool sounding name and it ends in CH, mm -hmm. which I always like words that end in CH. And it's kind of ominous and... Not much, a, though. Not much. What? <laughs> right. So that's, yeah. So it, that was a collaboration too, the name, I would mm -hmm. say. That's cool. I think it's fitting. I just lost. I just did this thing to my computer and I totally lost the screen. I see you. Where did it go? Yeah, we can still see you. <laughs> All right. Never mind. Move on, please. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I think this is probably a good place to, you know, start wrapping up. Um, wrap this you guys shit. remind everyone of, um, you know, the, the name of the song, where they can find it. Um, and like where to, where to best follow you? Yeah, sure. Uh, the name of the song is Bad Dreaming. Um, it's available on all the services, Spotify, iTunes, et cetera, et cetera. And another 70 worldwide. It's mm -hmm. kind of cool to see them all. You worldwide. Know. Worldwide, yeah. <laughs> um, Instagram, yeah. Facebook, Twitter, although I'm constitutionally against Twitter, so um, <laughs> I won't answer you there. Um, uh, yeah, that's in our uh, website, murdochband.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. We, well, yeah, I'll, I'll put links to all that stuff in the show notes when this thing comes out. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, is there anything else you wanted to, uh, you know, uh, talk about or, or put out there for people or. I'd like to say thank you very much for inviting us. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, lovely conversation and for supporting indie artists in general no, and us in particular. And uh, this is really cool. I've never done a podcast before. <laughs> so this is pretty special. Cool. Yeah. I hope that when we, uh, if we, and when we do play live and um, one of my goals of playing is always to have that moment where you're playing an improvisational solo and you're in that space and you just, you feel that moment, you know, that moment, Laurel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And hopefully that you'll be at that show when we have that moment. But thanks for having you, us for sure, man. Of course. Let me know when you guys are playing out. I, I, I'm not too, I'm not, I'm not in Philly anymore. I'm in New Hope. So I'm not that okay. far away from you. I love New Hope. Mm -hmm. It's a tiny, tiny, lovely town. Oh yeah. 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 What's that club there? The big club? There's Havana's. It's like the big. Havana, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've played the Havana, I think, three or four times in the last couple of years. Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. I hope it's cool. There's a lot of places to play. Yeah, John and Peter's is great. They have like a lot of open mics and, and you know acoustic acts and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, regardless of where it is, let me know when, when it's happening. I'll come out. Okay, that's great. Thanks again for having us. Thank you so sure. much. All right, guys. Thanks again. Um, we'll Thank be in touch. You. Okay. okay. Thanks, right, Carl. Cool. Nice to see you, man. Too. Thanks for tuning in and listening to another episode of About to Drop. 
For more info, please go to our page, www.vertigomusic, that's V-R-T-I-G-O music.com forward slash podcast. And make sure to follow and subscribe to us on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. Thanks and see you soon.